behind us. You're still winners. A great finish by the women. The men's race coming up next. Welcome back to the 25th installment of the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships as the men prepare to take their turn to begin a great ceremony here in Balboa Park as the four men, the only four men who as high schoolers broke a four-minute mile are here together in the same place for the first time ever. Alan Webb was the most recent to do it. He broke a four-minute mile in 2001. Marty LaCorey in 1967. Tim Danielson in 1966 and the first ever to do it, Jim Ryan back in 1964. We asked Ryan how breaking the four-minute mile changed his life. It began the day after the race uh, because the next morning the, well, the phone started ringing a lot more frequently. People want to talk about it uh, and it began impacting me in the sense that you know there were a lot more expectations. I started having greater expectations but so did Coach Timmons and so did the media and so did the public in general. Uh, and for the most part I was able to live to the, the most of those expectations but that's one of the things that began changing. Uh, as everyone began becoming a little bit more uh, looking to the future with high aspirations and you know when you meet those aspirations or those, those hopes and dreams uh, you're a great guy when you don't it's kind of hard Tim Danielson was the second man to break the four minute mile pulled along by U.S. great Tim Grella his accomplishment came right here in San Diego at Balboa Park in 1966 at three minutes 59.4 seconds the very next year the four minute mile was broken again this time by Marty LaCorey when I broke the four-minute mile, uh, Tim Danielson had done it the year before, and Jim Ryan had done it for two years before that. It was really an afterthought. No one made a big deal about it. It was like a one-line afterthought in the article in Track and Field News. I didn't come home to New Jersey to much press wanting to know about it. There was maybe one story. Much different than what happened with, with Alan Webb, because at the time, and I felt this sincerely, I felt a high school boy would be breaking the four-minute mile every year after that. So it wasn't that big a deal to me. Marty LaCorey couldn't have been more wrong. It would be almost 35 years before another high school student would reach a sub-four-minute mile. In 2001, Alan Webb ran the first indoor sub-four-minute mile. Um, that was the first mile I ran after this race for Foot Locker Cross Country. I got beat, actually, it still is the largest margin of victory in Foot Locker Cross Country history. It was when Dayton beat me my senior year at Foot Locker. And so I was coming off a little bit of a disappointing cross country. Race. No, I mean, I still, I still did very well, um, but I really wanted to win that race, and Dayton did. <laughs> beat me pretty good, um, but uh, and I had one little sort of tune-up race, and then I was going to go, uh, we weren't even sure if I was going to do the regular high school mile or do the open race, um, but workouts have been going pretty well, and so I was like, I might as well just hop in there and you know, see what I can do, um, and I we just started clicking off, you know, 29 point, 29 point. We came through 800 at 159. Then once you came through 1200 at 259, like 259, it was real, just a hair under three minutes. Just adrenaline at that point, you know. And I was like, hey, maybe I can do it now. Back to the course now as the men prepare to begin their portion of the day. All right, Bob, we're back here at the starting area after a great finish to the women's race preparing for the men's. That was a really close finish for the women, first of all. It was an absolutely exciting finish, and I think we're really looking for much of the same for the men's race. Uh, today we have some great runners, some of the regional champions. Shadrick Kiptu is a young Kenyan. He's been in America for about a year, a little over a year. Won the West region. Uh, uh, Matt Withrow of Illinois. Illinois ran away with the Midwest region. Ben True of Maine won the Northeast region. Those are some of the favorites. Uh, but there are about six or seven guys in the race who finished second, third, or fourth in the region that have a legitimate shot of winning this national championship today. All right, Lawrence standing by with one of the men's coaches, a former winner of the New York and Boston marathons and a world record holder, Lauren. I'm here with Alberto Salazar, coach of Galen Rupp, a very good runner in his own right. Uh, Galen was injured here last year. Tell me a little bit about how he's approaching this race differently this year, being healthy. 
Because you're excited. Last year, everything that went wrong went wrong, and this year, everything that could go right has gone right. So uh, he's very confident. He's very relaxed. And uh, yeah, again, he's just uh, had a great last three or four months, and all his training and racing has been geared towards this race. So, uh, you know, everything's gone perfect. Now he's just got to do it on race day. You know, a lot of people here are are, are thinking that no one can outsprint Kip 2 at the end. And, and I, I think if Galen's there with him, it's it's going to be close. Obviously, Kip those very fast, but yeah, I, I think Galen. He's got very strong. He's got a very good kick, so uh, hopefully he won't have to use them all. <laughs> well, yeah, we certainly will be looking for him in this race. Good luck to you. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Lauren. Preparing to begin the men's portion of the day. This is 2003 Foot Locker Cross Country Championships at Balboa Park, San Diego, California. And they're off. Bob, you've obviously run this course a number of times. You won on this course a number of years ago. In your estimation, what's Campeonatos the most de part of this course? A nivel nacional, high school, 2003, in Balboa Park, San Diego, California. Está lo mejor de lo mejor de Estados Unidos en campo traviesa. To the competitors that are here today on both sides, for the men and the women, how many times did they have a chance to run the course before race day? Just once. They come out the day before as a group, they walk the course, then they go their separate ways, maybe with their coaches or their teammates, and do a little jog out. But just the day before. All right, so early on in this race, you can see uh, the men from the south in the orange uniforms, the men from the west in the red off to the strong starts. We had a chance to check in with Plano High School's Scott McPherson from the south. We asked him about how his team starts. We usually, uh, Texas guys, us four, we've been known to go out pretty fast in the first mile. I think at regional we ran like a, it might have been four, sub 430. Uh, and then at state we went through a 434. We tend to go out really fast on our first mile. And uh, then we kind of just die off and it's kind of us three or four and we just kind of hang on to each other. But uh, here, since we have more people racing against, I think that we might have a better chance of, you know, hanging on the last couple miles and maybe sustaining the pace. So. Is there a strategy that's preferable here early going? Each of these athletes probably has their own strategy going to the race. Right now they're just trying to relax, suss out what their competition is doing, and then they will start to execute. Galen Ruff is starting to press the pace now. It looks like he's right into executing a strategy and he wants to make this race fast. The men are underway. More from San Diego right after this. Welcome back to Balboa Park in the 25th Annual Foot Locker Cross Country Championships. The men have just begun, and it's really too early to make any trend statements here, but Galen Rupp from Central Catholic High School in Portland is your early leader. And Galen is a senior at Central Catholic. Galen was injured in this race last year. He qualified well. He had high hopes, but had an injury and wasn't able to finish the race. And this year, he truly believes he can win. Galen out to the lead. You can see his coach right there, the great Alberto Salazar, with a little direction. Galen enjoys a great relationship with one of the all-time greats. He's been through everything that you could be through as a runner, and I think he uses a lot of his experiences to try and teach you what what you need to do. And a lot of the mistakes he made in high school of not you know not taking enough rest, for example, and he's really changed that in how he trains me. And he makes sure that I take a lot of rest, and the stuff that did work for him, he obviously you know has me do too. I think it's really important that I have a guy like that in my corner. <laughs> Galen out in front of a strong pack of runners. Shadrick Kiptu is right on his heels there out of the west from Albuquerque. He's an early favorite. You see James Strang in what looks like third place out of the south. Mohamed Trefe there from the west. Ryan Deke out of the midwest. A good strong field up front. Matt, you can tell with Galen pushing the pace up front, they're really strung out. They're not bunched. And it's going to be a race of attrition at this point. A lot of times when they get bunched, you can tell it's slow in the first part of the race, and it comes down to a kicker's race. But Galen Galen is really trying to make it a strength race. Galen from Oregon, as is Stuart Egan, one of his Western teammates. Oregon, where running is king. I don't know if it's as big as it was 25 years ago, but I'd say past couple of years it's really getting back on the rise because I think last year and this year and maybe the following year is probably the best crop of distance runners the state's ever had. And I think people are starting to really follow it again. There's lots of articles in the papers and it's it's a big confidence boost to know that there's a lot of people rooting you on at meets like this. 
Recapping our leaders, it's uh, Galen Rupp in first place there for the time being, and right behind him, Shadrick Kiptu and James Strang from Baylor High School in Tennessee. Matt, James is really ending his season strong. Early in the year, he was anemic. He had low iron. He struggled with his performances, but he really got that under control and is finishing the season strong. See if the men separate as the women did as they hit the hill here. It's an extremely steep, short hill. Galen's still at the front. He's really going to try to push up this hill and test the rest of the field. You know, Bob, we mentioned at the opening of the telecast about future Olympians coming from this event and a lot of great NCAA athletes coming from this event as well. There are a lot of college coaches that are here watching these athletes. One such coach is J.J. Clark from the University of Tennessee. Well, a lot of, a lot of times we've been, re, we've been recruiting uh, some of these youngsters prior to this meet, so it's, it's the best high school meet in the country. So we come here, I come here looking for youngsters, how they handle the pressure, their poise in the race, uh, can, they, can they stand up and, 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 and deliver in this kind of a meet. So it gives you an opportunity to see these athletes in a very competitive situation and, uh, and usually a lot of them come through. All right, Bob, as the guys come down the hill, it looks like we've had our first lead change. Shadrick Kiptu from Albuquerque, who finished first in his region in the West, has claimed a lead. And you can also see in the headband a guy who won his region in the Midwest, Matt Withrow. That's right, Matt. And Shadrick Kipto, originally from Kenya. He's been in the U.S. for a little over a year. Had to sit out a full season because of New Mexico rules. And has an interesting story in one of the state qualifying meets. Finished the race, won the race, came back on the course to encourage his teammates, and was disqualified. And there, by their rules, he was not allowed to run the state meet the next weekend. But they went to court, and they got it turned around, and he's now the New Mexico state champion. Shadrach Kiptu certainly one of the favorites among the men as the field approaches the halfway point in the race. And Galen Rupp is back in the lead. He's really pressing the pace. He wants to take the finishing speed out of Shadrach Kiptu. Galen Rupp uh, veering a little wide there, going out of his way. Galen Rupp, Shadrick Kiptu, and also Matt Withrow, who we talked about earlier, the Midwest champ. And Joshua McDougall, who is technically a senior, though he's homeschooled out of the Northeast region. More from the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships right after this. Welcome back to the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships from Balboa Park in San Diego. About halfway through, great participation watching men's action. When we left you, Joshua McDougall was making a run at Galen Rupp and Shadrick Kip to the leaders. One guy we haven't talked about a lot, Bob, you see him in the headband there from the Midwest. He was a winner in his region, Matt Withrow from Tinley Park, Illinois. And Matt won that Midwest region by 20 seconds on a great course, and that's quite a large margin of victory. Second in that Midwest Regional was Ryan Deke from Smoky Hills High School in Aurora, Colorado. We've already seen one winner from that school. Ryan Deke has taken some time to study this course. The pack usually starts really, really the breakaway when you come down by the starting line again at the mile and a half point. Coming down that hill, that's where everyone, that's where it, is, that's where it breaks off between the men and the boys. That's when the men go, and that's when the pack just separates. Galen Rupp still in the lead, pressing the pace. They're coming up on two miles. It takes a lot of energy to, to run the lead for this long. Distance running is really about preparation for the event specifically. This must have been a strategy all year to prepare for this. And it's also about taking risks. And he's taking a risk by being the lead for this long. Shadrick Kiptu really on his heels there. Is it is it easier to be the guy who's being paced by a leader? Or is it just as easy when you're running out in front of everybody else? It's definitely much easier to follow somebody but that doesn't mean that's how you should run all the time sometimes you have to take the risk to be the front runner because that is your strength and Galen feels that that's the best way to win this race for him Galen Rupp, Shadrick Kiptu, Josh McDougal your three leaders and Matt Withrow is making a run on the outside there Matt Withrow now uh, it's a pack of four at this point as they approach the hill Kaylin Kaltenbach lending some vocal support fresh on the heels of her win Matt Withrow making a strong move at two miles. He has done this throughout the season. This is where he wins races, and he's really going to test them from here on out. So is this the place where he makes his move and then stays in front of everybody? Absolutely. He has made his move to win this race. He's running really hard now. They're under a mile to go, and he wants to break the rest of the field. 
at under a mile, he almost looks like he's into his, his final 100-meter sprint here. Well, it's close. It's a fine line. He's going really, really hard. He probably has another gear left, but he doesn't have too many gears left. He is close to the edge. Rupp and Kip2 on his heels. Kip2 in second place for the time being. And this pack of three has emerged in front of all other comers here at this point. They've reeled him back in. It's a three-man race, as you just said, Matt. This is going to come down to a great finish. What happens when the shirtless yahoos come running up to you there and you're in the middle of a race? Is that distracting? <laughs> it's not too distracting, especially at this point in the race. You're not even paying attention to those yahoos. I would imagine these guys are locked on right now. They're fully aware of the fact that they're the three leaders at this point as Rupp reclaims the lead. This is a dogfight once again as they approach the hill. And Josh McDougal has reeled him in. It's now a four-man race. And I would have to imagine at this point, they're at the hill. This is where your race is made right here. This is it. There's four guys, as we just said. There's a half a mile to go. They're going to go up this hill. And you can already see Galen and Shadrick pulling away. Just a small gap going up that hill. This is really going to determine the placings. It, it may not televise uh, as treacherous as it runs, but I know you, from firsthand experience, have had your, uh, your bouts with this hill. Well, the downhill is certainly more treacherous than the uphill because you're going a lot faster but I have fallen and I got up and luckily still won the race. These guys are really working hard right now. Look how slow they're moving. That tells you how steep that hill is. There's Ben True from Greeley High School in Maine. He raced here last year. Thought he started too strong too early. And the race that got him here established a very good qualifying team from the Northeast. That race was a race that pretty much anyone could have won. It was a race that... Uh, uh, I was just most guys were just going out to get the top eight, so no one was really working for the win. Um, I was going out there just to qualify, and I decided I wanted to give myself a little leeway before the sprint, and I got myself in the lead, and then it just ended up in the front at the end. I mean, I, it was it's nothing that um, it, it means nothing to me, <laughs> really. Ben True, one of the more modest competitors here in this event today, and as we revisit the leaders, Rupp back in front. Shadrach Kiptu, Josh McDougal, and Matt Withrow. Galen Rupp is really pressing hard. He's got a few meters on Shadrach. They're turning the top of the hill. They're going to head down the steep decline. They probably have about 600 meters to go from here. Matt Withrow is 10, 15 meters back. I wonder if he paid too high a price for that big move at two miles. Galen just looks like he's cruising down the hill. Shadrach's starting to turn over a bit. He's right on Galen's shoulder. Now he's turning over a lot and shooting into the lead. We're in for an exciting finale. The Foot Locker Cross Country Championships is brought to you by Foot Locker. And by Nike. Stick around, the men's finale, next. Welcome back to the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships from San Diego on a day where surfing takes a back seat to cross country. And one of the reasons is because we're in for another great finish. Shadrach Kiptu and Galen Rupp stride for stride atop the leaderboard. This is not over. Shadrach has about five meters, but Galen is fighting hard. He is not losing his rhythm. This is going to be a close race. Rupp and Kip to and now and now we've got Matt Withrow making a move on the outside in the headband from the Midwest Tinley Park Illinois in the house Matt Withrow making a move on Shadrick Kip to a huge move 200 meters look at that acceleration the arms going back and forth he has got this race he has drilled them Matt Withrow is in flat out sprint inside at 200 meters and it looks like it's his to lose Matt Withrow came from a distant third wow. to claim a win what an awesome finish and Galen Rupp pips Shadrick for second what a great finish of the Foot Locker Championships Cerradísima la final. and Benjamin True both out of the Northeast finishing fourth and fifth place respectively Ryan Deke and Christian Wagner both from the Midwest at sixth and seventh Stuart Egan out of the West will finish number eight, but the story in this race was Matt Withrow with an unbelievable 200 meter kick to claim the victory. That is the story. He made a huge move at two miles. He couldn't hold it. They went in front of him again and usually it's over at that point. Yeah, I really thought after he made his, his move
move at that point and then faded back into third and fourth place. He may have been done. The move may have come, might have come too early, but he made a great second move. That kick in the last 200 meters was brilliant. And Bob is with our winner now. What an amazing race. I mean, there were so many things going on during that race. So you were in the lead, you were back, you were off the pace a little bit, and you came with a monster finish over the last 600 meters. Tell me how it played out. Did it play out how you expected it, or did you have to make adjustments? Oh, big time adjustments. Uh, somebody from the crowd or somebody just said, just uh, shut the gate, and I went, and I picked off Josh first, and then I got Galen, and I like, coming up on Shadrack, we crossed the street, and he made a little look back at me. And I looked him in the eye, and I knew that I knew I could take him. I knew I could go after it. And I got up that last hill and just let the final hill take down. I took one glance back, noticed I put on a little bit, and I smiled at myself because I knew I had done it. Well, congratulations. Everything you just described are thoughts of champions, and uh, you have a promising future ahead of you, and we're going to look for great things from you in the future, Matt. Do you know what your plans are next year yet, or are you still considering um, options? I'm still considering options. I was kind of waiting for all this to be over, and I kind of knew that through all this, I might have been able to open up a couple more doors and a couple more options for me, but I got a couple schools I'm looking at that I'm really confident about right now and nice nice schools, but um, hopefully be able to make a decision soon. Well, as a 2003 Foot Locker National Champion, there are some more doors open for you now, and we wish you the best of luck. We'll look for you in the future. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Kennedy. Bob, thanks. And as you look at the individual results, also note that the Midwest won the team competition in the men's category as well, making for a clean sweep by the Midwest today. Well, three guys under 15 minutes for 5K cross country. What? That's pretty good. With Galen Rupp, a great second place finish, Central Catholic High School in Portland, Oregon. Was Neely, congratulations on a great race. Oh, thanks a lot. Let's start by talking about the finish. It was it was, it was very close That's for Galen second Rupp. and third place, and it was a matter of a chest, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Alberta's Galen always Rupp. talked to me about, you know, at the finish line, even if they start to pull away, you still got to try it and just push hard because, you know, if you can keep getting closer and closer to the guys ahead of you, then that's just going to help you in the future. And that's just what I tried to do today, and I ended up getting them at the line. <laughs> Bob, have you, you've seen a lot of these things over the years. Uh, can you remember two finishes as, as close as those? I really can. Usually it's a dominating performance by either the, the woman or the man, and uh, two very exciting races today. And as we wrap things up in San Diego this afternoon, a great day of racing, some great competition, a sweep by the Midwest, and a new women's champion is crowned. With the 32 athletes competing on the women's side, there were plenty of surprises, and Caitlin Kaltenbach really pulled off a great race in that last 200 meters. It was quite exciting. And a new men's champ is crowned after a great kick by the eventual winner. Well, the men's race was a true heavyweight fight. Galen Rupp set a hot pace early. The lead changed four or five times. They were throwing punches at each other, and Matt Withrow of Illinois had a devastating finish to take the title. Two new champions crowned the 25th installment of the Foot Locker Cross Country Championships are in the books. For Lauren Fleshman, for Bob Kennedy, Matt Baskersian, thanking you for joining us today.